everybody, this is Chelsea from Schiller's. Today we're going to be going over a basic sewing machine. So for this instance, we're going to be using a brother, and this particular model we are working with is the JX3135F. Um, so when you originally unpack your machine, there's a few things you want to do first. Of course, plug it in, turn it on, which usually the on switch is on the right hand side of the machine or on some models right behind on the back right. And you'll turn it on so you can see the beautiful light underneath. And when you unpack it as well, you'll probably be wondering where you put the thread. Most machines have a little thing that slides down like this. This is your spool pin. And I especially recommend that if you're traveling with your machine or moving it or storing it to fold this down before you do so because we have had many people come in with that little guy snapped off. So um, let's start with threading. So if you take a look at your machine, you'll notice that many of them have the thread path marked out for you. On this particular machine, this has it um, kind of not embossed, engraved, I don't know which word that would be, um, but it's, uh, it's sitting kind of carved out on the machine. Um, there is a solid line for threading your uh, thread and a dotted line for winding a bobbin. So in this case, we're gonna be following that solid line. And of course, there are also numbers. So we're gonna start with this part right here. The thread just gets pulled right in. There's a little spring that holds it in place. It'll come down here. You'll see the number two, number three, pull it around and back up. Now, if you do not see this little metal piece here, this is called the take up lever. See how that wiggles when I move the hand wheel? You can turn your hand wheel until the plastic little line that's printed on your machine is lined up with this crack of your machine. So you can just turn that towards you until you get there um, or until you can see that take up lever. It's a very important piece that a lot of people miss. So we're gonna bring the thread back down. And then we get down to here, there's this little bar that's uh, sitting right above the needle. I usually recommend to take the thread, kind of pull it straight like this, and just slide it right into that bar. And then for my next trick, I'm gonna thread the needle. There we go, quick and easy. Now for our actual bobbin, this is surprisingly easy as well. This machine has what's called a self-threading bobbin, which means you do not need to pull up your bobbin thread to start sewing. It's very handy. Not all machines have that, so I'm gonna show you how to thread your bobbin uh, both ways. So you're always gonna start with a top load bobbin like this with your bobbin as a letter P. I always say P for perfect sewing. Your thread's gonna go over the top and to the left. You're gonna put that in. And it's a little hard to tell here, but there's this little, metal piece and right in between that and underneath that is where your tension is of your bobbin so if i pull this underneath here i can actually feel it kind of clip in and now that's in the tension this machine has that self-threading bobbin so i get to pull my thread right around this and right into that little cutter and it holds it in place i can cover up my bobbin case and just start sewing if you have a machine that doesn't have this what you're going to do is do the exact same thing, except for pulling it around this way because you don't even have it. You're gonna pull it into here. Once it clips in, you let go. You're gonna grab your top thread and then your hand wheel. Turn the hand wheel towards you. Your needle will go down and back up. And then you just pull that thread right up and there it is. And now we can pull both of those underneath and be ready to sew. And there we go. Now when it comes to uh, threading your actual bobbin and putting thread on it, there's a slightly different path we're gonna take to do so. So we'll start right from the beginning. This time in the machine, we're gonna be following the dotted lines. So we're gonna start with the same exact first spring right here, but then we're gonna pull this into the little knob here. It's gonna go under and over, creating a crossover right here, a little X, which happens to look exactly like this image here, um, which is great. So that looks perfect. We're gonna pull this over. Oh, we don't have a bobbin in there. It's okay, I have one here. I'm gonna clip that in. I'm gonna take the thread to the back of the bobbin, and I usually twist it around three or four times. And then I gotta take this thread and stick it through the hole of the bobbin. There we go. I'm gonna hold that thread up, slide this, to the right, and then I can push down on my foot lever and that will start winding. Now, after a while, I could stop this and I can clip this little 
thread out of the way and then continue winding. Um, that way it doesn't get down and get all tangled up. And I can continue winding like that. And eventually when it's all done, it's actually gonna hit this little plastic thing and it'll stop. And then I can push this back over to the left, pull it off, flip my thread, and of course, put my bobbin in my machine and be set to go. And then we're gonna re-thread this. And one trick as well, if you ever do have any issues where something just doesn't look right with your stitches, always just re-thread and check your threading. Because you never know if you missed one of the tension parts or maybe you forgot to lift your foot. That's a very important thing. You always wanna thread with your foot up. You know, maybe you missed your take-up lever. No big deal. When in doubt, just re-thread. Okay, so now our machine is good to go. Now, one thing I want to point out, this dial right here is not a stitch selector. That is your tension. So usually, see how there's those lines? Usually between a four and a five or on four is what you want to be on. I do not recommend ever touching your tension assembly. If it helps you, you could just put a little sticker over it and not even look at it. A little happy face sticker. All right, so let's talk about what this machine can do. Um, one of the big dials that um, I do want to talk about is our reverse button. So many times we need to back tack and make sure everything stays in place. All you have to do is hold this down. So to do a quick demonstration, what stitch am I on? Oh, let's go to a stitch eight, which is our regular straight stitch. Gotta find my foot. There we go, and then I'm going to hold this down to back tap. See how it goes backwards, and then it'll go forward. And that's how you do a back tap. There we go. So, um, so that's just pretty easy. You just got to hold that down. Uh, one of the next things is, of course, the stitches that the machine has. Um, the first thing I want to go over, we're just going to go in order, is our buttonhole. Now. Many people have survived their entire existence without doing a buttonhole, and that's because they're afraid to do one, and I promise you it's very easy. This is what's called a four-step buttonhole, which just means you have to switch back and forth. So typically I would take my garment, or whatever I'm doing my buttonhole on, and draw a little line to signify how large my buttonhole needs to be and where it needs to be. I would grab my buttonhole foot, which for brother machines is designated with the letter A, A for buttonhole, and um, I'm going to clip this on. Now, one other thing, too, is whenever you have a letter on a foot, you always want it to be facing towards you. Kind of gives you an idea of how to put that on. So, you know, right up facing towards you. And this is going to move. Now, it's not a buttonhole that does it automatically. You need to tell the machine where the buttonhole starts and stops. So the first thing is our buttonhole always starts in the front and then goes backwards. So we'll pretend that this edge right here is the edge of my, my let's say we're making a vest and this is the edge of the vest, and I want my buttonhole to start here and go back. So I'm gonna line this up right on the edge here, and there's these nice little lines on the foot that help me line that up. And I'm gonna start with this on A. There's four different letters. There's A, B, C, and D. We start with A, and we stitch just the top of the buttonhole. Then we go to B, it'll stitch backwards. Then back to C, it'll stitch the top, the back part, and then D will stitch back down to meet. And again, you need to pay attention and stop and start where you want that buttonhole to be. All right, so we're gonna do that little front part. Then we're gonna switch this to B. It's gonna stitch back. Now we'll pretend that's how long I wanted my buttonhole. Switch back over to A, or in this case, C. It's gonna stitch that little back part and then to D. Now, one thing, if you are trying to switch and let's say the foot is down or the needle is down, you can't actually switch this. So you wanna make sure that your needle is up when you do go to switch between uh, your dial. And we're press down and go back forward. All right, I think we're good. Pull that towards me. And there's our little teeny tiny buttonhole. <laughs> It's not the best since I think I pulled it away from the machine a little too early before it finished off, but hey, it's for demonstration purposes. Um, so you can make buttonholes and, um, you know, make some really, really nice uh, garments very easily on this machine. So next, our stitches two through uh, five are zigzag stitches. So we're going to switch there. 
Uh, number two is a thinner zigzag and it's actually really good for knits where three and four are kind of more your typical zigzag with three being your average size, four being a little bit larger. Um, number five is actually thicker zigzags. So they almost emulate a satin stitch and then they get a little bit uh, less dense as you kind of go up. Um, so, you know, and you can kind of position this in here because it doesn't look like there's an easy way to do it. But if you kind of just move that inside of five, you can switch between those different zigzags. Six through 11 are straight stitches. There are some differences between them though. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, if you look really close at them, it may be hard to tell in this camera, there's a little oval with a dot in the middle. That is actually signifying where your needle's gonna fall. So if I put this foot on here and I switch to any of those, let's say seven, it's actually gonna put the needle right in the middle of the foot, making an easy guide as my edge of the foot here. And I can put my raw edge here. And so, you know, a nice seam. Um, usually it's a little bit over a quarter of an inch, about a, um, a little over that. And um, stitch number 11 is also a straight stitch, but the little dot is to the left of the foot. So that will actually give me a wider seam allowance if I use that same edge of the foot. So that might be better for garments or maybe upholstery. So that way um, you can have a larger seam allowance. So that's stitch 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 are very unique stitches. You can use them for decorative purposes if you'd like, but a lot of them do have a purpose in real life. 12, for an example, is a, um, a blind hem. And blind hem stitches for me, the hardest thing to do is to remember how to do that darn fold. So what you're gonna do, is you're gonna fold it kind of like an S if you look at it from the side. Oops, wrong way. You're gonna fold it into the wrong side. <laughs> there we go. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna sew a straight line and then do these little triangles, these little mountain tops or bites as they call them into the fold of your fabric. So I'm gonna switch over to 12. Let's see if I can line this up easily from an angle. Nope, I missed one there. Okay. Doing blind hems does take a little bit of practice to get it lined up right. And then when you fold it back open, you can see where I missed a stitch there. It does these little lines and that's all you get to see. So if you match your thread to your fabric, it really is a blind hem. Um, so next we have 13, which is a zigzag. However, it has all these little dashes. That's actually for thicker fabrics. It does a stitch multiple points in the zigzag. I've used it in, for example, the jelly roll rugs that are quite popular. 14 is also a blind hem, but it's for knits because it has that little zigzag to it. And that way, if you stretch your fabric, it'll actually pull your, your stitches straight and not give you any type of a weird lettuce edge. 15 and 16 are different types of overcast stitches. Um, 15, how that works, if I'm stitching on a raw edge, where is my foot? There it is. If you line it up just right, it almost looks like a serger stitch. go. That's kind of cool, right? So if you don't have a serger, you can do a very similar stitch and seal the raw edge of your fabric just like that. You could also put in a slightly heavier thread and make it into a decorative edge on fleece or something like that. Um, 16 is a similar stitch. You can also make it um, look like a little um, scalloped edges and 17 is a decorative stitch similar to that. So you can always put in decorative, you know, variegated threads or fun threads like that and use these stitches for other than their intended purposes. Um, so one thing, there's quite a few things that come with your machine. It always comes with some extra bobbins. Uh, typically these guys come with three or four bobbins. It always comes with some extra needles. And um, this is a double needle. A lot of machines come with a double needle. And no matter if you have a $50 machine to a $20,000 machine, if you put a double needle in your machine, you will have to hand thread it. Your threader will not work if you have one. So um, this has a single shaft with two needles coming from like a little plastic holster. And you can take those uh, two threads and thread them together through your machine, separate them and thread them each into each needle. 
And if you need an extra spool uh, for this machine, there's actually a little hole and a little spool holder that it comes with, and that slides into there. Some other models actually come with a little spool holder that snaps into your bobbin winder. So if you have a wide opening here, it may be one that snaps in over here. And you can use your double needle and put two threads through at once. Uh, reasons for double needle, you could do a decorative stitch with a zigzag, or you could do a regular straight stitch and make um, a hem look like it was done on a cover stitch machine. Um, some of the other feet, you have a zigzag, or not a zigzag foot, that's, uh, that's actually what's on here. This is a zipper foot, also starts with a Z, and um, <laughs> the way this works is you can clip it into either side, and I am not in the correct stitch to show this. You want to make sure you're in one of the middle stitches and see how this is going to go right along the edge of that foot. So if you have a, a zipper that you're sewing on, it's going to get really up close to that and give you a very nice stitch. And if you have the zipper on the other side, we can also clip it on the other side and do it that way. And to remove the feet, by the way, there's a little black button on the back. I can just push and that'll fall right off. The other foot that this comes with is an M foot. An M is actually for putting on a button. It's a really cool foot. And in this case, this machine doesn't have, you know, fancy dial on the back to drop our feed dogs. So it comes with a little cover instead. So this you're going to put on and then we'll pull up our bobbin thread. Um, so that way it doesn't get caught under this. I actually clipped my bobbin thread in here, so we're not going to sew at the moment. And this clips on and you'll actually put your button underneath with the two holes as close to those blue knobs as possible. Most buttons have the same size uh, button holes that their, their little holes are the same distance apart, so it makes it pretty easy to sew. And I believe it is stitch three that works with that for putting on a button. And this will make it so that way it doesn't pull your fabric, so it'll actually sew a zigzag stitch back and forth in the same place, enabling you to sew on a button. There we go. You can also use this if you want to do uh, free motion sewing if you can purchase a free motion foot. This is a screwdriver. Uh, your machine usually comes at some form of one. It might be a little circle. There's ones that are a little ring uh, with a hole in it, and you could even put that on as a fancy necklace if you want. Um, this one looks like a cool key, and you can use this for your, your actual plate. You can use it for your needle or even to change out your ankle of your machine because there are many feet that you have to unscrew this. Uh, for example, a walking foot or a ruffling foot, you can switch this out. So usually there's some form of a screwdriver. Now, um, there are of course quite a few other feet you can pick up for your machine. Um, maybe you wanna do uh, quilting. A quarter inch foot is a fantastic foot that I highly recommend. Um, stitch in the ditch foot is another great one. There is a ton out there, so you can always get more feet. Um, this machine, of course, comes with a manual. And the nice thing is it's written both in English and in Spanish. And it's very easy to read, very easy to understand. And it even comes with a little DVD. Most machines these days come with a little inf uh, informational DVD. So you can always watch them and watch how it's threaded, just like you're doing right now with this video. Um, but between the different educators, you may pick up different things. This machine is also really unique and cool because it comes with something a little extra special. These fashion faces. Now I know it's kind of silly. I think it's awesome. Um, but you can customize your machine. So, you know, maybe it's wanting to do a little leopard print look or maybe, you know, a little Matisse is feeling that way. Um, you know, you can put these right over the sticker that's on here. Now, this is a new thing that I've been seeing on the market lately for Brother, and they even have a 4x4 embroidery machine that has a similar thing with Star Wars and Marvel uh, faces that you can put on it. So it's, it's really cool. Um, so that kind of brings us to the end of our lesson today. If you do have any questions, you're always welcome to contact us. Our website is schillersontheweb.com. You can also comment on that you this YouTube video and ask any questions and we'll get back to you. Um, so for now, um, this is the basics on a little machine. Thank you so much.